Hello, I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic, and in this video we look at an interesting piece of technology, the variable aperture, which on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra allows us to control the depth of field. That is, how much or how little the background is blurred in your photos. And it's done optically, not digitally, as we are used to with portrait modes. Yes, it's a feature that will appeal mainly to experienced photographers, but on the other hand, it has a very real impact on how the photos will look. What is to come in this video? First, we will summarize and explain why the variable aperture is really interesting and what the magic is all about. And then I'll turn on the screen recording and show you everything in detail right in action. If you would like to see my detailed review of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, here is the link. In this video, I will concentrate mainly on the main sensor and main lens, which gives us the option to change the aperture. And why is that important? Because variable aperture actually means that we are able to control depth of field. So we are actually able to control if the background is blurred or not, or to be more precise, the degree to which it's blurred. You can see it here in, on these examples. I'll give you much more in the other parts of this video, but you can clearly see that it's very important for the overall function of the photo, so to say, because, uh, well, you can live with both versions here, I guess, even here, but in case of that shot, if the background is not blurred, it just would not be a nice shot. Or, or even here, it's quite boring photo, but again, it gives us a chance to see what we are speaking about here today, because that is boring photo. This is much, much better. The same here. So once again, this is just a very brief introduction to why it really matters, why the ability to change aperture makes a huge difference. And I really think this is a sort of game changer. So let's hope that that magic will stay with us in the future releases of the high-end uh, mobile phones. And now one very important note. You might be saying now, well, I'm used to blurring my background every day with the portrait mode. Yes, that's correct. But this is not what we are talking about here today. That magic is done by lenses. So this is only optical trick, only optical function. Everything is real. Whereas if you see that shot, the portrait mode was used. So the background was blurred artificially. I'm not saying this is a bad photo, but I'm just saying that that uh, tricks with aperture opens up completely new possibilities, the ones to which we are used from the world of traditional photography. So just to give you some technical background, here is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, its main four lenses and four sensors. But what really matters here is that little thing here. It's the aperture. You, you can see the little blades and these blades can move. And if you have that mobile phone in your hands, you can see it. What it does, in fact, is that aperture brings more or less light to the sensor, which is not that important. What is important is that illustration, which gives us the key technical specification. Lesser number you have more blurred background you get. At the same time, though, what can be seen here is that, of course, that mobile phone has some limits. As you have seen, the maximum aperture we are able to achieve is four. If you are a landscape photographer, for instance, you might not be saying, oh, but I would really need eight or 11 or 16. Certainly, there are some limits of that tricks. You can't go further than four. But still, even that difference really makes sense and makes taking photos much easier. And where do we send that? We have two options where to play with the aperture. First is just the default photo app, which has one limit. You only have four options to set. 1,63 up to four. But do not forget to visit the Pro section, which looks a little bit differently and which allows you to set much more precise number. You can see it here on that uh, screen recording, which I believe actually gives you a pretty good idea how it all works. Because if you look carefully, you can see that if we are using the small apertures, the background is really blurred. And if I go further up, it 
gets more sharp and uh, the photo simply changes. So even in these couple of seconds of that recording, I guess you are able to get the broad idea what are we talking about today. And one more important detail. As I mentioned, today we are talking about the main sensor, main lens, which is amazing and has the variable aperture. But I just would not like to omit the second lens, uh, which is called liquid lens. It has a 75 millimeters and it's just amazing. <laughs> That's the reason why I decided to include it, it even here in this video. Um, by the way, it gives us certain options to again regulate, change, the levels of the background blur. You can see it here, it's called depth of field. And uh, as you can see from these examples, the, the results is again there. It's done, I guess, by different technology than the variable aperture. The uh, liquid lens actually implies that the shape of the lens can be changed and it brings with it many other options, including changing the depth of field. But the most important message is that please do not forget to play with that lens as well, because it's just really amazing. Let's see it in the real, real action. If I touch here that button, I have the option to change aperture. Uh, let me first say that that applies only to the main sensor, main lens. And you can see that if I turn on that 3,2, we you have a different option. You can change shallow depth of field or extended depth of field. It's it's a different thing. It's not using the aperture in uh, the sense we are playing with it today. So we'll not go into details and we'll just go directly back to the main sensor. Touch this little thing here. If I touch 1,63, this is what happens. You can see how immediately background gets blurred and we move into totally new territory and it's just amazing. If I touch it again and I go to four, did you see this? Oh, that's amazing. Of course it's blurred, but it's blurred much less. Let us see this. So this would be aperture of four. And now if we go here, this is the aperture of 1,63. Here is the key difference. And it's really amazing difference, which gives you a lot of creativity uh, for your experiments. So now I'm working on aperture four. And if I touch it here, just look what's happening there. I touch 1,63 and you see how it all changed. Yes, you can spend hours and hours exploring what all that means. And uh, you'll be always happy how great this is. Let's see it once more. This may not be as exciting example as before, but we get the beautiful valley here. So this would be aperture four. And look at this. You can see how it is going to change. This would be 1,63. Did you see that? Amazing. This is just amazing how it is important. So let's see it once again. So again, I am not necessarily saying that four is a wrong option. Please do remember that smaller aperture also actually means that the quality of photo might be somehow lower. Of course, you know, and please do not forget, you have the portrait mode. And it could be somehow confusing because portrait mode gives you similar experience. It blurs the background, but this is artificial. So thank you so much for your attention. I do hope you liked my video. Take care. I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic.